We are live. What's going on, folks? What a great show on Catfish Weekly. I had fun. I had fun. Hold on. Hold on a second here. I'm trying to get my list up here. Say hello to everybody, Jerry. I like to say hello to everybody. I see Luke's in there already, too. I see three plus one outdoors. I know that Betty is watching home. What's going on, sis? How you doing, Betty? I see Annette Morgan in the house. Carmel Muncy. There's Epic Catfish. What's going on, Tim? Fish and Freedom in the house. Great crew member right there. Fishing with Squirrel. Uh, fishing and cooking with Mike Chavez. I'm guessing Mike is out in his uh, parking lot waiting to go into work. Hopefully you have a good day at work, bud. And if not, I hope you enjoy your night off. Uh, we'll say hello to Luke again. Good show, Luke. How you doing, bud? I see Ian Tipton in there. What's going on, Ian? How you doing? There's my friend Michelle from It's All Mine. Great cooking channel there. Jeremy Bay in the house. What's up, Jeremy? How you doing, sir? Oh, everybody's jumping on me here. We got Jersey River Rat. What's going on, Jersey? Lance McCougai. What's up, Lance? How you doing? Uh, everybody's jumping. We got a uh, crew member, LG Bass. Uh, we got Lynn in the house. What's up, bud? Good seeing you in these, uh, more and more every week. It's good to have you back. The great Maurice Kaysen in the house. What's up, Maurice? Mike Irvin in the house. There's our buddy Mo Creek Fishing crew member. What's up, Mo? What's up? Uh, Marie, uh, Muskrat Adventures. There's uh, Northeast Missouri Anglin. Welcome. There's crew member Nina from Nina's Kayak Crew. What's going on? Off the uh, off the rest Catfish Hunter, a.k.a. DT in the house. What's up, buddy? Philip Williams is in here. There's my friend and crew member Pontoon Jody. How you doing, Jody? There's Quiet Man Curtis in the house. There's Real Gals Fish. How you doing? You got to remember it's Real Gals Fish. Not fishes, it's fish. She was happy that I, I knew that, so I scored one. Uh, and I don't do that too often. I really mess up the ladies and get in trouble. Uh, Robert Andrews in the house. How you doing? Hey, look at this. Nephew uh, Andrew is a new member. How you doing, uh, Austin? I'm sorry. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for your support. Real Gals Fish. I said that. Robert Andrews, Sean Abney in the house. Stonefly71, what's up? Of the Weekend Angler, how you doing, Josh? There's the great Tim Molina crew member. What's up, Tim? Uh, I see Whisker Dreams. I see Whiskers and Stripes. He's another great crew member. I got some member. I got some news for the crew members. I'm going to go through this. There's Big Bill's Veterans Catfishing. What's going on, Bill? There's Bugman. Carmel Muncy, how you doing? Uh, Dale Hayslip in the house. Daniel 45. Danny Stone Fishing. If I'm saying hello to somebody twice, uh, I'd rather say hello to you twice than miss you once. Uh, Down East Tackle. We have Eric Massey Jig Company. Eric's going to be my guest next week on the show. Uh, Parker, I'm looking forward to talking to Eric. He's a good dude out of the great state of Missouri. And so that being said, I want to say hello to Miss Cindy Stokes. I want to say hello to D because I'm pretty sure D can hear me in the background somewhere. How you doing, D? What's up, sister? How you doing? Uh, let's see. Fishing Local 252, Fishing with Squirrel, Fat Boy Eric Catfishing. I remember that Fat Boy part of that. There's D. What's going on, D? Uh, Ian, it's on my Jeremy Colvin Fishing. You guys, if you get a chance, go over and uh, check out Jeremy's channel, Jeremy Colvin Fishing. He got the shaft from YouTube. Uh, pardon my expression, but that's exactly what they did to him. Go over there, check out his content, and give him a sub, uh, comment, do all that good stuff that YouTube requires of you. Uh, it'll help him out. Uh, Muskrat in the house. Uh, again, thank you again, Nephew Austin, for uh, joining the crew. Uh, Philip Williams. Quiet Man Curtis in the house. There's Troy over at Real and Virtual Outdoors. What's going on, Troy? How you doing? Uh, Sean Abney, I think I got whiskers and stripes all right we got a lot of people now uh for some reason folks uh stream yard is acting funny tonight so it's gonna be it's it's almost impossible unless it breaks free for me to highlight uh uh comments uh but we're gonna see if it uh keeps up um it's staggered here in uh, uh behind the scenes so i tried to reload right before the show that's kind of what happened also if you're a crew member i do my monday morning coffee chat um today with the weather and it being a holiday um the, i think people were busy so there was only a few people in there uh, i'm kicking around the idea of having it uh um uh, it late in the evenings, like maybe even at, directly after the show, do like an after hours thing, see if the guest is willing to hang around, something like that. Um, I will be posting something on a community tab, um, probably a poll. Uh, if you could remember to check that out probably sometime tomorrow, I'd appreciate you. Uh, if you're a crew member, um, and we can, Hey, there's chunky cats and we can, uh, go and we can go from there. 
uh, I just want to make sure that I'm making the rounds for everybody. Some people work in the mornings. Uh, the morning coffee is really fun to do, but I think we're going to switch this around from time to time so we can make sure to get everybody in there. Let's see if we got anything else here that I might have missed in chat before we start the show. Man, they are rolling. We have 76 awesome people. Oh, there's Dan Thompson. What's going on, Dan? What's going on? Yeah, Dan says he's busy on Monday. See, so there's some good input right there. Welcome to the Catfish and Crappie Podcast. My name is Mark, and today's guest, Jerry Parker from Parker Pursuits. How you doing, bud? How y'all doing? We already got a question from James Dockery. How does Parker feel having to carry Josh and Rob while they're out fishing? It's painful. My back, I've got a couple blown discs. It's just, oh, my gosh. It's just so much weight to carry. <laughs> I mean, they ain't little boys. I mean, Josh is what, like 6'9"? Josh is a big, big man. And Rob ain't no little dude either, you know. <laughs> uh, two great guys, great guys. I love fishing with them. Had a good time with them last with uh, with them last year and you, too. Uh, we got to spend some time together, hang out, and chew the fat a little bit, so to speak. And there was, a, you know... I, you know what the guest list looked like last year. There was a lot of fat to chew out there. I ain't going to I ain't gonna oh, lie. Yeah. But some of the greatest people, I mean, and the friendships, you know, since then, it's been awesome. I am really, really looking forward to this year. Well, if friendships consist of private messaging each other, calling each other bad names and making memes about each other, then I guess we're pretty darn good friends. So <laughs> yeah. that happens a lot. And there's some brutal more people that are more brutal than others, and people have perfected that to an art form. I don't happen to be one, so. Well, you got volunteered for it now. Too late. If you if you missed it, you missed it. So, oh, let's see what D says. D says I'm back in the office now. Uh, so I've had to miss the member chat. Oh, that's all right, D. We're we're gonna we're gonna try and make changes. I see fishing chick in the house too. What's going on, Lisa? How you doing? Big Skip fishing in the house. What's going on, Skip? I've been see. I think I saw him last night on Avid Show when I stopped in there. Uh, it's always good to match up name or faces with names. It's good to see people. So Jerry. I'm scrolling through Facebook. I think it was this weekend or Friday, one of the two days, either Friday or Saturday. And all of a sudden, I come across the Catfish America page, and I see there's a post up there with your picture holding a big-ass catfish. I'm like, when did he catch this? I click on a link. I go to the video, and it was just about a year ago, wasn't it? Yep. Right at yeah, you, just, you need right to let you, at least your buddies know, or were you afraid we were going to give you a, maybe the, maybe we need to lighten up on Jerry. Cause we're kind of hard on you. <laughs> <laughs> I got broad shoulders, man. I can take it. <laughs> you need to speak up when you catch fish like that. Um, I, I click on the video and I'm watching and, uh, you got three, three not, if I'm not mistaken, three big fish, correct. Yep. And those were all bank fishing the same day on the great Mississippi river. Correct. Yes. And we, uh, I got home, I was I was done for today, and my best friend, like my little brother, he gets home and says, hey, we need to go back out there tonight. All right, so get some more bait, and we went back out there tonight and caught our two of them in the 60s that night. So, yeah, now I made another video of that, and it was pretty, uh, pretty awesome. You know, I've been talking to Rob, or I remember talking to Rob, like when we first met, not Rob, but when you and I first met, um, you've been on the show before and it was all because of Rob. He's like, Hey, you got to check, check out Jerry. He does a pretty good job. I think you should have him on your show. And, uh, I I'm definitely glad that we did and we became friends and stuff, but he was saying you pretty much got a horseshoe in your ass when it comes to fishing. Would you agree with that? Maybe, but, uh. I put the time in, you know. It's just, that, that I know. You, you live stream quite a bit, and I know that, you know, you're not always getting on those big fish. No, but when you no. do, you, you do really well. I mean, whether – well, let, let, let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the species you're chasing. Um, obviously, you're chasing blue cats. What else do you like to go after? Flyheads, of course. You know, who doesn't love love flyheads? And, uh, of course, your channel cat, which Mendota kind of ruined me on channel cat. You know, it's just – you know, if we get if you get catch a cow cat, you know, in the upper teens around here, it it's a big deal. And up there, nobody even like bad an bad an eye, you know. And everybody's catching like catching twenty twenty pound range. I'm kind of like even 
I, I want to get that 30 plus pounder this year, you know? That's my goal. I want a 30 pound channel cat, definitely. The 30 pound is a magic number, for, for, or 30 is a magic number. I want a 30 pound channel cat. I want a 30 pound king. And I want a 30 inch walleye. Those are like life goals of mine. So we've been working at those for a couple of years now, and we're going to see if we can't get any closer to them. Um, and definitely, you know, a 70 pound flathead don't hurt either, Jerry. Well, come on down. We'll, we'll try to get you on one, you know. I mean, I'm still working on a 70, 70 pound flathead myself, you know, but. Uh... I, I want to thank D for sharing out links. I appreciate you, D. I saw Kevin pop in there. How you doing, Kevin? <laughs> also see uh, my buddy Ryan setting hooks and crossing eyes. Check him out on uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, I think it's either setting hooks or it's Redbeard. Check him out there. I want to make sure to give him a plug. Obviously, uh, let's see. Alicia Barnett's in the house too. Say hello to her. Uh, three plus one. I think I got everybody. All right. So. Uh, um, that 30 pound is definitely a goal for all of us that, that go up there. What, what else are you fishing for um, locally and, and are you traveling? Okay. In the area where I live, I'm extremely fortunate. I have clear running over dark streams, like literally less than 100 yards from the door. And then I'm only 15, 20 minutes going to Illinois. And I've got all the lakes over the Rim Lake, Crab Orchard, Baldwin the bad word and uh we have several uh bigger creeks and rivers that are muddy running and the mississippi is not that far from me so i get an influence of all kinds of species but i i chase everything watch channel i mean bass crappie bluegill carp i mean a little bit of everything i i don't discriminate i love fish for everything but the big cats are definitely my love you know but you do pretty good out of that little kayak years too, don't you? I uh, used to do a lot of kayak fishing. I kind of got out of this year a little bit, but I'm going to get back into hot and heavy this year. I'm actually, uh, well, you've been there, uh, the Kaskaski River. You know, I'm going to do a lot of uh, drift fishing this year on the Kaskaski. So, uh, that river's a little calmer than the Mississippi is, so uh, I don't think you'll be you'll be all right in that kayak. I yeah, think as long as you stay on the upside of the dam over there, you'll be uh, you'll be in good shape. But that that has big fish definitely written all over it. Um, and there was one spot where we did good the year before uh, with Josh um, Friday and Jason Lamb. They they killed it the night I had left. Uh, I was sorry that I left. I was feeling under the weather, but that just showed that proved that there's that there's big fish down there. Was, yeah. Cause that lock's right there, so there's always fish coming in and out of it all the time. There's some, been some giant fish caught in the cast. Mm -hmm. One other guy, I think, got like a 39 pounder or something. I, I, I have to admit, I, I, I would not mind catching a 40 pound blue. We're gonna see if we can't get on one this year. Uh, I might. You, you'd mentioned Powerton, right? You got plans to go to Powerton? Yes, I want to try to get a trip together. Uh, actually, we were kind of messaging back and forth, and Josh had kind of up in the air about it. And I know Rob, he's all uh, for it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen that comment. But, uh, yeah, I want to hit it. But, man, for everybody I've talked to you and read, that Pirate is so, so hit and miss. You know. I've been there three times and got skunked all three times. Everybody got skunked that we went with all three times. The whole bank did. Um, you, I, my, my only recommendation, at least what I've learned or heard, I'm not learned, but is make sure that they're running uh, hot water that day. I heard rumors. I don't know. Have you, have you heard anything there are, that they actually shut that plant down and they just run it to keep it from? From what, from what I'm gathering, they are running right now. They finally started uh, producing uh, electricity again so they have been producing hot water out of the discharge so and that and that's a deal breaker you know in, in power plant lakes so i know jonathan does pretty good or he does really good down there i know a bunch of guys that got him up in the the 40s i know one guy who's got a 60 out of there um you, you it's a good place it's uh for those of you listening on the podcast it's in uh just north of peoria if i'm not mistaken yeah, Peoria. yeah, yeah. Um, north of Peoria, Pekin, is it? I'm sorry, is it Pekin, Illinois? 
peak in Illinois. Correct. I believe that's right. And uh, um, it's a good spot for winter blues. If uh, you're willing to make the mile and a half walk and you're able to uh, uh, not need the, the restroom for, for the time you're out there. Cause there's no facilities once you get out there. Uh, they also have some, I really, I've seen some really big stripers come out of there. I, I would say hybrids, but I've seen some really nice sized ones over there too. You plan on chasing any of those while you're out there? Yes, definitely. I love catching hybrids. We don't have a lot around here, but actually uh, stocked 59,000 of them into Ball and Light this past September. And before 2010, Baldwin was the number one hybrid driver like in the state of Illinois. But then they had a massive uh, fish kill due to the plant overheating and superheating the water. That'll... That'll definitely do it. Um, from my understanding, and I'm, I'm I'm like the furthest from knowledgeable when it comes to stripers, they're pretty delicate fish. They are. They really are. They. That's why they recommend, like, in hot water, like, hot weather, don't fish for them, especially if you plan on releasing them, because it's like almost a death sentence for them. When well, you're in uh, water and hot, when it's hot. There, there's quite a few fish like that. I know a lot of big musky guys up here that uh, – um, They'll stop fishing for musky in the hottest time of the year just because they're more worried about conservation, which is a cool way to be. Um, but they're pretty quick about getting them back in the water when they do catch them even out of warmer water and stuff. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. If you want our kids to play in, play in the water like we do, we, we got to look out for that stuff most definitely. Yeah. So how's your crappie game been this year? I did really, really well. Uh last spring and the early summer then i kind of steered away with it and started getting on the cats hot and heavy and uh this fall work was super busy and then when i did get a chance to get off i was in the woods hunting so this fall not not too good but i'm gonna definitely get up try to get back on them here if we get to, if the water stays open i'm gonna try to get back on some crappie you know, you mentioned hunting, and I remember having a conversation about you after one of your successful hunts, and that kind of brought to mind uh, um, Josh's Weekend Angler's uh, biggest loser competition. Are you in on that? No, I am not. Oh, come on, you'd be ready for deer season next year. He's going to keep everybody in shape, get everybody in shape for this I... catfish tournament. Weren't you complaining that you're too old and you're getting a... Uh, a little rotund to res yes, kind of like I, me I and be dragging deer out of woods. I had a, I got a good friend of mine. Uh, I used to work out with hot and heavy with, and he called me the other day, basically just chew me up and down. Said, "Man, dude, you're letting yourself go." So I'm gonna get back to yeah. I gotta get back to him, but I'm gonna do it on my own terms. So, so. Uh, you you're <laughs> just too shy to let Josh know what you weigh. I understand. I weigh 238 and it's twisted deal and sexy deal. There you go. And this <laughs> this, this is just, my bald head is a sonar panel, and I store the for, for my sex machine and I store the energy down here in my belly. That's what I tell everybody. Josh, the weekend angler says Jerry can't lose much more. A stiff wind would blow him away as it is. Speaking of stiff winds, let's talk about winter blues and Baldwin. Let's go back to the beginning. Now, Winter Blues, um, people listening on the podcast, is a tournament that Chad over at Fields to Waters has. Uh, basically, he has it every year this time of year, give or take a week or a weekend, whatever it is. And uh, it's in the dead of winter. It's been uh, an uphill, uphill battle the last couple of years for a few contestants, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, and that's to be expected with the extreme conditions. Now, Chad was trying to make it a little more competitive. At least that's what he says. In making a, a rule, the fish have to be five pounds or better to count. And I remember you being one of a, a, a few people that didn't agree with this rule. Well, you know, I mean, a tournament's term, but Chad did have a point. I mean, he wanted to keep it competitive because you can go with that lake on a bad day. And still catch a crap ton of fish, you know. Which I get it, you know. And plus, everybody likes people watch catch big fish, you know. So, 
but uh <laughs> we got people in chat putting up uh uh baldwin baldwin award you guys win the baldwin award and then uh, josh put in justice for baldwin oh. he's one of the ones that are in there too people coming in late and saying hello what's going on if you're listening to the podcast you can always come in and watch the show live on a monday uh if you're listening to this after the fact uh, i had some audio problems with last week's show so i didn't get to post that so i want to apologize right now uh please forgive me uh jerry's coming a little low but we're going to try and get that edited um in post and uh, we should be good and we'll hopefully we'll be back up this Monday. Well, hopefully you're listening to it. And if you're listening to it and you got this far into the podcast, I know that you like it. Do me a favor. Give me a five-star review, whether you're listening on uh, uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. I'd really appreciate it. It helps it uh, uh, move forward. It helps for more people to see it and it get recommended in their recommendations. So now that I'm done with the YouTube slash podcaster thing, um, so uh, you had mentioned you guys are getting together this week to do a little live stream fishing, a whole group of you. Tell me a little bit about what's going on with that. Yeah, me and uh, Josh from Weekend Angler were uh, over there a few weeks back, and we got talking about it, and I was like, so, well, I'm going to put a stream together. And uh, so I've got Josh from the Weekend Angler. I've got Danny Stone, Outdoors, Rich from Fishing and Freedom, and his wife, Stephanie, from Real Gals Fish. And possibly Avid might come over and Rob from Mo Creeks. So we're going to all get together. And on a, it'll be at 9, uh, 9 Central Time, 9 a.m. Central Time. And we're going to go to Baldwin. Just hang out. And just oh, I was with you until you said Baldwin. I might have made a drive, but i definitely not going down there. <laughs> it just looks too windy and them fish are too tiny. You guys going to catch eaters, I'm guessing? Eater, but I mean, there's always a chance to catch. I mean, that lake, if you get offshore, there is big fish to be caught. I've caught some really nice fish out of there, and there was a gentleman, the DNR was telling me he caught an 80 out of there last year. Holy smokes. And my dad, he uh, had a good friend of his. He's come down to fish, and my dad caught his personal best. There was a 40 plus out of there, and I've caught several fish in the 40s, 50, and the biggest I've ever caught was right at 60 out of there. That's crazy. I didn't realize there were fish like that in there. Every time I see you out there hustling your butt off on the on that kayak and reeling them in crazy, there was a little bit of controversy the one the one tournament, but we're not going to talk about that right yeah. now. That that could have just been Chad, but uh, uh, I think they were they were claiming that you didn't weigh a fish, right? But that that nor here nor there. Oh, that was only one fish. I wouldn't have made no difference. But, Back to Winter Blues, it was you you and Josh were fishing together. It, it was windy that day, wasn't it? Oh, it was horrible. Cause the original plan was we were going to take Josh's boat out and get offshore and drag some of the ledges out there. But we watched. <clears throat> hang on a second. Got a little bit of Yeah, excuse us. Jer Jerry's a little bit under the weather. He's got a, uh, he's a little bit hoarse here. Uh, so we're out, bear with him. He's but, uh, being a champ and, and coming on the show to talk to you guys. So. So our plan was to get offshore and drag them ledges. But we watched that weather all week, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse as far as the wind. And the night before, we talked, said, well, that sells it. We're going to fish off the bank. So we walk up there, and I kid you not, we we started out with, like, just four or five ounces of lead, and you can literally sling it out there and watch the bait come back to you because the wind was blowing so stinking hard. And we end up going up to eight ounces of lead, which, dang, you're fishing on a lake. You wouldn't think, you know, <laughs> you need that. But that's the only way. And we end up having to make a move. Because most of the area we fish on that bank is only anywhere from four to seven foot of water. But short of bridge catching, we only get into like four foot of water. So we end up making another like 400, 500 yard walk and getting up into about nine to 10 foot of water, which it was a dink fest, but we just couldn't, couldn't get no distance, you know. Well, you 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 did get on the board with one fish, right? What what, what was the weight? You know, I would, I'm I'm so horrible at this. I was I was oh, over nine fish. pounds, I think. Okay, so it was a little bigger. For some reason, I was remembering. I was thinking just under six, but I could be wrong. It was early in the morning when I was helping Chad out with the tournament. I did have a blast doing it, and and I know you guys couldn't hear me. It was so windy out there because no. I had called Josh to 
Richard Simmons of catfishing. And, and he went back and watched it. And he hollered at me through <laughs> private message like, like 10 hours later. <laughs> I believe he was also called the uh, human traffic cone as well. Yeah, pretty much. He was wearing that, that neon orange jumpsuit. That was pretty cool. Definitely uh, was attention grabbing. And so was all that fish you guys caught. What, what was the final total of all the fish put together? I think it was like 46. Just 46. That's all, huh? <laughs> I hate you guys for catching all these fish. Epic Catfish made a comment. He says the Illinois State Record Channel Cat is a Baldwin Lake misidentified blue at 45 pounds. Well, there you go. I I got I, I agree with that. That could yeah. Could you, if you look at the pictures, it looks 100 percent like a blue cat. It's got the anal fin, everything. So People are asking how would that happen? It happens sometimes. People misidentify fish. Fish come in at different colors at different times of the year. I mean, you'd think they'd count the the rays on the on the dorsal fin, but they don't, or on the anal fin, I should say. Uh, for some reason, you figure that a DNR person would do that. I'm sure they will next time, uh, or if somebody, you know, they get somebody out there, uh, you can always remind them to see what it is. So cool. Um, so, what is your per personal best uh, uh, blue cat? Let's we'll start with that. 93 pounds 93 and you okay so that wasn't caught on that one video though was it no that one video what okay 93 pounds holy smokes was that bank fishing or was that in your kayak that was bank fishing that was yeah. bank fishing and where'd you catch that if you oh, we don't want gps coordinates um mississippi river mississippi that's yeah. your good spot ground man i got a i got a place in my heart for that river holy smokes i need to get out that way a little more i'm about four hours uh four hours ooh, east of there east i got it yeah i told you i'm geographically challenged people uh four hours east of there uh if i want to get down to like alton or something i think that's like a five and a half hour uh trip um, so hopefully we'll be able to make something like that. If not, I just might hit LaSalle. You ever fish LaSalle? No, Lake? I have not. No, I have not. Maybe, maybe you and I can meet up there. Maybe, uh, we'll get Rob and, uh, uh, maybe we'll make it a, uh, Illinois slash, uh, Missouri boy trip. We can meet up there, drag some baits for, uh, um, for blue cats. And then maybe if, oh, that's a power plant. We can't stay there too late, but we can, we can stay there. Uh, for a little while, I'll consider the day. I know a spot over there where we can get 12 inch shad. Oh, I got the connection. Nice. We'll be all set to go. And hey, look at this. Uh, Sutton Hooks and Cross and I says he'll be there. Yeah, you're definitely welcome, Ryan. Absolutely. I'll, I'll shoot you a text before that, before we make that happen. But I, I would definitely like to do that. That's on my in my plans for the year. See, even Epic says that LaSalle is better than, uh, better than Powerton. Good to know. Uh, and then also I want to get down there and do a little crappie fishing with you boys. Maybe hit Rend or Lake of Egypt, or maybe even head over to uh, um, Kincaid. Uh, to need, need to come to Kincaid in late April and May. There is some giant crappie in Kincaid. We, we need to get on that lake with Lyle and uh, Kim Burnett, too. I got to make that happen, too, this year. So my dance card is so full, buddy. And God, God bless everybody for the for the invites uh if you're listening out there uh let me say hello to lyle he's probably listening in the background i know he's got some stuff he's working on he's got a couple of surprises coming up for you people so stay tuned to catfish weekly i'm sure he'll let the cat out of the bag if dockery doesn't get upset and let it slip so we're, we're going to be keeping our eyes open for that um there we go truman lake that's that's the word i'm looking for maybe we should make that a trip boys we got to talk yes. we'll, we'll have We'll have a talk about that. That seems like it'd be a lot of fun. I'm sure Mr. Burnett would mind if we were all out there and he'd show us the ropes. Um, it makes me happy to think of open water. We got frozen water here. Gary, I know you like the ice fish. We talked a little bit about how uh, you don't have any uh, uh, good ice where you're at right now, right? No. It, well, our weather has been just, excuse me, French, batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. right? Because we we'll have one like tomorrow it's gonna be 50 degrees then the day after that it's gonna be in the single digits then back up to the upper 30s by the weekend it's just been up and down the what lakes will freeze over then within two days they're melted down here so it's 
And usually we don't get our like really, really bitter cold until seems like mid early February here. But now the northern part of the state, they got hard water with Dockery. He posted <clears throat> posted today. He did some ice fishing and did really well. I, I haven't talked to him since he got back from his fishing trip. He did pretty good. Good job, James. Way to go. Uh, he got a whole mess of crappie on, on the ice today, uh, but I haven't had a chance to talk to him. I'm curious how far he actually got got out onto the ice because I know he was a little bit worried about that. And, you know, we had had uh, um, uh, Luke on uh, uh, Panfish Nation. Big shout out to Panfish Nation on Thursday nights after fishing with the Chad over on Fields to Water. Um, and he was he made a good point of saying that, you know, there's no such thing as safe ice. Once you start thinking it's safe, you're gonna get you're gonna get hurt. So um so I'm always curious. Out here in northern Illinois, we're we're right on that border. Either we have a good year or a bad year. We've talked about that quite a bit in the last few shows, but it is that time of year. Uh, I just want to bring that to everybody's attention that if you do get on, on some ice, I know uh, a lot of the people here in chat and uh, i imagine a lot of people out on listening to it on the podcast do come from southern states and and might get to to see some of that ice once in a while i want to get out and try it uh always remember no such thing as safe ice keep your head on a swivel uh wear the protective gear and, and uh <laughs> they're giving me crap Every time I stop, see people at a podcast, you got to come here and check it out. They're giving me all sorts of business in chat. They're giving me a hard time telling me that Dockery's still in the lead. I, I made the mistake on one of my five feeds to uh, mention that I'm finally ahead of Dockery because he is like the slayer when it comes to uh, um, catching fish. He gets them by the by the, by the the uh, fish catching machine. He, he is. Uh, so I made the smart ass comment, Rob won't let me go. But I did notice that... Uh, uh, James Dockery is coming after Rob, too, when it comes into the taking photos. I saw him post some photos today. Him and Katie went out for a hike. So he's going He's going after Rob, too. Man, that little guy is competitive. Yeah. Just a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about James Dockery, if you're listening on a podcast, you can always come on to YouTube and subscribe to his channel at James Dockery Fishing. That's J-A-M-E-S Dockery, D-O-C-K-E-R-Y Fishing on YouTube. But he'd love your subscription. Actually, he won't. We just send people over there to make him mad. Just do it to aggravate him. Yeah, do it for him, guys. <laughs> Also remind everybody that Jerry's link is in the description, uh, whether you're listening to a podcast or here in chat right now. So check it out. Oh, I think Josh just posted the link to Dockery's channel. Cool. Yeah. You know what? Where is he? Uh, excuse me for one second here. Where is he? Uh, uh, there we go. All right. I'm going to take Rob's wrench away. Uh, there we go. Boom. Somebody could take care of Mo Creek fishing for me. I'd appreciate it. I see Bex just came in here. It'll either be how much you want to bet it's either going to be D or Tim that take care of uh, uh, Mo Creek fishing for me. Uh, or for cat, cat, no, Josh, Josh got him. Nope. <laughs> oh, D got him too. <laughs> uh so tell me a little bit about your bass fishing. Let's really upset the people in chat and talk a little bit of bass fishing. I know you do enjoy catching bass, don't you? Well, <clears throat> when I was younger, I was big into the bass tournaments and everything. But I've always catfished, you know, everything. But I got into the whole bass phase there for a while. I mean, it was just, that's all I did for a little while. But now it's more, like I said, a multi-species thing. But I've got a few videos out, everything from flipping, cypress trees, wacky rig, top water. And I do a lot of creek fishing because the creeks around here are just loaded with smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass. So, yeah. um, Creek fishing is fun. Uh, wow, they timed him out again. <laughs> Holy smokes. He's, he's probably going to be out for the rest of the show. Sorry about that, Rob, but I didn't realize they were all going to gang up on you. <laughs> Holy smokes, they're mean. They're brutal in chat. Brutal in chat. So what, what kind of smallmouth are we catching on these creeks? I mean, if you catch one that's pushing three, you're really doing something. With every once in a while, you'll get a, into some really good ones, which I have gotten some you know, in the upper fours, 
But most times when you get, it's going to be usually that pound, about two pound range. It's a big majority of what you're going to catch. It's not like it is. I'm in the upper and up north in Minnesota and Wisconsin when the guys just catch seem like giants. Yeah, they get some pretty big ones up there on the Great Lakes, really big ones. Uh, I had uh, um, a young man from fishing with Dom early on in the in the show, and uh, he's a ha- – I don't care what happens, um, what, what you say about Don, but you can't say he's not a good smallmouth and walleye fisherman. And he gets on them channel cats too pretty hard. So uh, um, I definitely – want to say shout out if he happens to be listening to Dom. Uh, good job, bud, on staying on the fish. Also, Dom just got his uh, uh, degree. He's actually, um, I think he's a psychologist, I believe. Uh, no, I think he got his degree for helping people, and he's going to uh, help less fortunate people. So I wanted to make sure I gave him a shout out. Fishing with Dom on YouTube, he's got a pretty decent channel. So uh, there's a shout out to Dom. Um, uh, Bex is saying, love some smallmouth fishing. And Epic backed her up with multi-species. I'm going to have to rethink my spot on the boat, Jerry. Well, like, when I was a kid, my mom and dad, we always uh, did a lot of camping on uh, this stretch of water called Apple Creek. And it was just full of everything. I guess that's kind of established my love for multi-species. And then I end up... uh, I'll read it in a second. Finish talking. Okay. But uh, then we made the move when I was probably uh, in sixth grade. We moved less than a mile from Mississippi River. And that's where I really got big time into catfishing. Because when I first started out, catfish all have the Zepco 808, a South Bend heavy action rod. And I spooled with that 99 cent Omni Flex line. And uh, we used rail spikes, spark plugs, where we could for weights. And I had a buddy of mine. We fished you know, all the time. We walked miles and miles up that river. And uh, you would hook a good size fish in that Zepco. And the only way I could get him in, I'd have to walk back about 10, 15 feet, then run fast as I could. Crank, crank, <laughs> back, crank. And that's the only way I could get him in that old Zepco. And, uh, but you were getting them in, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to show you some pictures. Like where I weighed like a 80 pounds soaking wet and I'm holding these blue cat stuff. I have to dig them out sometime for you. I'd love to see them. I love to see pictures. I have people send me pictures all the time and I love every damn one of them, guys. I appreciate it when you say share that stuff with me. And uh, um, since we're talking about sharing pictures and stuff, hey, I want to remind everybody that we do have a Catfish and Crappie group. The shadow ban has been lifted on Facebook. So just look up Catfish and Crappie on Facebook and you can post your pictures there as well. Get yourself a lot of stuff. So uh, I try to keep that group as spam free as possible. Sometimes it's a little hard, but if you're posting pictures, your post is always going to get posted up there. I don't care who you are. Appreciate it. Uh, Chad made a comment I need to bring to everybody's attention here. Chad says, Parker told me he catches more big Uh-oh. fish more frequently uh, and from more species than Epic ever dreamed of. Did you say that? No. Didn't Chad dig him a hole the other night? And I think he did. Out, I, think. I think he did, and he's looking for a way out. We have people talking in chat about how they love uh, – <laughs> Uh, they love smallmouths. I do love smallmouth. I, I'll, I'll catch smallmouth here. Look at this one right there. Here we go. <laughs> we got the UK kid checking into what's going on. Fishing the dream. How you doing? Uh, yeah. There's there's all there's some uh, uh, drama going on between Chad and, and Tim. I don't I don't know what's going on. I think they're 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 playing the the Dieter slash Catfish Dave card, and it doesn't it 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 helps them guys out. Who knows? It could be uh, onto a new thing right there. Them too. They could be building a beautiful relationship together. No. <laughs> As the chat goes silent, they're like, "What did he just say?" I said, make sure you check the description, folks. Jerry's link is in the description. All my links to my social uh, media are down there, too, so you can keep up with the, sh- with the show and the happenings. We're going to have some changes. i got some really good guests the next three or next three weeks lined up. Next week's going to be Eric Massey from Eric Massey Jig Company. Had a good awesome. conversation with him today. He's a great dude. Are you familiar with, Jer- with uh, Eric Massey? Yeah. 
Yep. He ties a heck. He ties a heck of some jigs. He did some uh, uh, some powder coat. Well, I think his son did the powder coating work, but I got some powder coating done with him. He was co- he was telling me how busy he is. Uh, we're gonna see if we can make him really busy. We're gonna see if we can break him next week with with orders. How's that sound? <laughs> he's probably drinking the Pepto Bismol. Oh, he's listening to this. So. <laughs> and thanks for sharing out links in the chat, uh, Chad. I appreciate you, man. Oh, let's see what we got here. Ooh, <laughs> there we go. They're getting they're getting crazy in the chat. <laughs> All right, so where are you guys fishing this weekend? We're gonna go to Baldwin. Baldwin, you are going to Baldwin. You did say that. Are yeah. you guys gonna do a? You guys should do a catch and cook if the weather holds up. You know, uh, me and my nephew, he's gonna go with this too, and he. Uh, He's the other half of my perfect pursuit team, and we were kind of kicking that idea around, uh, maybe doing a little catch and cook. And I've got one of them little eighteen-inch black stones. Mm-hmm. And uh, if we had like a like the flay knife, just take a flay knife, whip out some of the small, maybe make a little black and fish. So we're gonna kind of watch the weather and see what the uh, long we don't have gale force winds. And one of the big things I'm looking forward to about this trip is uh, Richard wife Stephanie. Uh, real gals fish has never caught a blue cat so we're hoping to uh get her into her first blue cats i think you picked the right place to put her on a fish you might not put her on her pb but you're going to get the game start you're going to get the ball rolling with her and and getting ladies involved in in fishing especially wives that aren't in it themselves is always a good thing so um, you did good taking her there, and, and I had a chance to speak with her and Richard uh, when he was on my show. Uh, was it last? I think it was two weeks ago. And uh, they they seem like they seem like a great couple. I know Richard just put out a video where they were fishing uh, uh, for some crappies. Uh, they got on uh, a few, nothing major, but they did get on some. It looks like they had fun hanging out together, and that's that's a lot of what fishing is. And he, you notice what I noticed right away? He didn't hit the dock roof. Yeah. <laughs> he was fishing some do- some roofed ducks. That uh, that particular body of water he was on, I have fished there before, and that is a pan fisherman's paradise. It's got some big crappie in it, and it's got some like jumbo bluegill in there. Cause that stretch of water in a few months it will be completely covered in lily pads. Just lily pads, got awesome bass, with full full of pickerel. Cause I actually uh, did a video. Uh, earlier in my uh, YouTube thing on air, and it just was catching a snot out of pickerel out of there. You know, I have never caught a pickerel, and I've never caught a a, so- a sauger or a saw guy. Those those are really? all my- She's listening. Yeah, we don't we don't have him up here. I want to give a shout out to uh, Mad Cat or Catfish. What's going on, Richard Ward? I look forward to seeing you in May, my friend. He's a good dude. Yes, he is. Very nice gentleman. So. Uh, tell me a little bit about your pike experience when we were up in Wisconsin together. You know, I'd always, I'd only ever caught like some really small northerns, you know, and and the first one I caught up there was on my dadgum dock demon. We were all sitting there. We, you were sitting there. I had Rob off the side of his kayak, had Betty and Brandon and Chad and Dean, everybody scared out to this cove. And I had a little dock demon trying to catch a channel cat. And that thing goes down and drags, slipping, and a big old northern rolls up. And I'm like, all right, what do I do now? And I ended up catching two or three pretty nice northerns. And one morning, I uh, was throwing jerk baits, trying to get on some of the smallmouth. And I went through like $60 in jerk baits in like a matter of like 10 minutes, pike breaking me off. Yeah. Enough of that. <laughs> they, you know, the, the heavy leaders help with that, I imagine, right? Yeah, but I said I'm trying to get on them some of the smallmouth. I heard there was some really nice smallmouth in that lake. So uh, uh, you know, I haven't heard too much. I know there's big crappie in that lake, and there's some big panfish in that lake as well. I know there's big perch, and I know there's big channel cats. So I mean, it's it's a heck of a fishery. Yeah. Um, I've seen some video. Um, of people sight fishing walleye under a bridge up there on the, on the chain at certain times of the year with uh, jerk baits and stuff, which really piqued my entrance. That would be pretty, pretty that would be pretty cool. And they do it at night. It's like lit under this bridge, Jerry. So you can see their eyes chasing your jerk baits at night. Tell me that doesn't sound like one. 
We got yeah. Big Jules Veterans Catfish and says, I think Chad and Epic should fish on the Ohio River together. What's going on, Jesse? How you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to get caught up in chat here. Sorry about that. Fish on Luke says he runs 80-pound fluorocarbon leader for muskies. And that reminds me, I got to message Luke and get his recipe for pickled pike because that's on my to-do list this winter. I've never ate uh, pickle or pike. I've heard they were just so bony. Pickled, not pickle, pickled pike. Pike, yeah. And uh, I've heard they were really bony, so I've never. I've heard they're amazing eating. Well, pickling them, it'll 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 melt those uh, Y bones. I had it a long time ago. Uh, some of the old timers I used to hang out with up north introduced me to it, and it, it. I have to admit, it's it's pretty darn good. It's actually pretty darn good. So I, I I'm going to try doing it this year on my own. Uh, some of the waters I catch pike on here local to the house might be a little questionable. You know what? But if I get a smaller one, we just may say you know. Screw it and go to town and get that done. <coughs> There's SK Crappie Catch Adventure. What's going on, SK? How you doing, bud? See, there he goes. And, and Luke confirmed that he says no bones and pickled pike. Yeah, I believe they get they get uh, um, uh, dissolved in there. And Epic says no, Mark. I don't fish slow waters with tiny fish if I can help it. Wow, the smack talking. Ooh. Yeah, and Lyle confirmed what I already knew. Lyle says, now you are the old-timer, Mark. I, I know. I do feel like an old-timer, but you know what? That's okay, Jerry. Here's Lyle, though. You're still a, a green sprout. Thank you, my friend. You will be back on the show. <laughs> you definitely will be back on the show. But, uh, we talk about um, the uh, eyes glowing. But here in Missouri, uh, a lot of these old arc streams, uh, gigging for red horse suckers is a big tradition. And that was the first time I ever seen a walleye's eye glow. We'd use a, like spotlights on the front of the boat or lanterns. they gig these suckers in real extreme cold weather. And you'd see them eyes just glowing on the river bottom. And that's also where, when I was younger, learned that uh, catfish uh, wintered up together. I remember we got to this big long stretch of creek and we get went into a creek bend and there was just hundreds of channel cat and flatheads laying on the bottom and that just just blew my mind, you know. What so, time of year was that? Do you remember? It was January. It was January, yep. yeah, in the winter. The especially the flatheads, they'll get all pulled up. Don't tell anybody that spot, man. Do me that favor. So I got a spot here on the Fox River where I know where they 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 winter up. And ever since I found it, I never go back this time of year, ever. I don't want anybody to see me over there or whatever. I don't need people. I know a lot of people, and I know there's some people in chat that'll say, if you're catching flathead in the winter, you're definitely snagging. You might snag them in the mouth, but you're still definitely snagging. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah. I haven't caught any in the winter, so I couldn't tell you. I don't target them in the winter. But I do target some uh, channel cats in the winter here locally. Um, I picked up – you ever see those uh, – Jaw jackers, Jerry? Yes, I uh oh I've actually seen the first time I ever seen was on a uh, Millican uh fishing. He was using the jaw jackers and uh and my dad actually uh gifted me and my nephew these uh bigger versions of kind of like a jaw jacker. And just he got them on sale and I'm gonna do me and my nephew are gonna do a video on these things because they're like an automatic hook setter, which I've never used anything like that in my life, but we're gonna do a little video, do they work, you know. They're, they're pretty vicious. I'll put a I'll put a 38 inch whisker seeker ice rod in them, you know, and they're they're a little on the stiff side. And when them suckers that they, they, they'll rip they'll, they'll cross some eyes like Ryan's username says. They'll 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 put some hurting on the channel cats, but it's cool to see them go off. But I do want to let everybody know I gotta keep reminding myself, Jerry, that this this people listen from all parts of the country, and I know that they're uh, I believe they're against the rules in, in Minnesota. And I imagine they are in some other uh, states too. So check your local uh, regulations uh, before you definitely go and use them. So, hey, look, there's uh, Mo Creek is back. We're going to give him back his wrench. Maybe he'll uh, he'll be all right. So uh, uh, there we go before anybody else times uh, right. there go. Now Rob behave. <laughs> He's a good dude. <clears throat> And I don't want to get him too mad. He gifted me something a little special last year when we met in May, and I'm hoping that he's going to do that again. He says he'll set me up. 
So I think he will, but I don't want to mess that up for nothing. But Rob knows what I'm talking about, too. The man is an artisan. Artisan, I have to say. And he takes good pictures. Make sure you check out Mo Creek on uh, Instagram, and you'll be able to see your pictures. Mo Creek Fishing, I believe, uh, is what it's under. Every time I log on Instagram, I see his stuff come up. So what else is going on, Jim? Let's get back to that video, the 80 pounds. What, what, the fish count was what in that one video where you got all those miles? Uh, three fish. Three and fish. I, and and the only three hits I had that day. They were good. You don't need any more with those yeah, fish, Jerry. No. With you. Don't get greedy on me here. Yeah. But. <laughs> that day was just a, a perfect storm. The river was, like a, was on a little bit of a rise. It was... Uh, getting into late September and there were so many buffalo and carp off the tip of that dive were coming up in that current scene and I started at daylight and I didn't I think it was 9 30 maybe 10 o'clock before I finally got my first hit then I caught the one and then boom boom that first one was how big huh I actually don't tell them how big it is let them go check out your channel Link in the description. Go check out Jerry's channel. Do you remember what the name of that video is so people can see? Or do you want them just to go through uh, all of your videos? Two PBs in a day. Two PBs in a day. Okay. We'll, we'll make it a little easy on them. And but while you're there, check out Jerry's channel. Check out the rest of his content. You'll see that he's definitely, excuse me, a, definitely a well-rounded angler. And he loves the sport just about as much as anybody I know. So, And he has a horseshoe in his ass, according to some of his friends, when it comes to fishing. Now, you had mentioned your nephew. What part does he have in the channel? You want to give him a shout-out, maybe? Yes, Jeremy Bay. He does all my editing. He's the one, him and my wife and my girls are the one that got me into YouTube. They're like, man, you need to do it and do it. And the first couple of videos I did, my uh, youngest daughter, Katie, actually helped me with the editing and everything. And then Jeremy gives me a call out of the blue one day. He's like, you know I do a lot of editing for my work. And I said, well, yeah, but you're busy. He goes, Dude, I want to be part of this. You know, I want to come along and I want to be part of this. I was like, all right, you know, and it's been a great partnership ever since, you know. He does definitely so. does a good job. I really enjoy the uh, his editing work. So uh, shout out to Jeremy, you're a good dude. Hopefully I'll meet you when I come out there to fish. Does he fish with you ever? Yes. And actually he'll be with me uh, this coming Saturday. Oh, cool. I'll keep an eye out for him. I wish I could make it down there, but you guys are going to Baldwin and I ain't fishing Baldwin with you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well just uh, kidding i'd go down there in a heartbeat if i could fish with all you guys i don't care if we got fish or not i i really think it'd be a good time you guys are good people and i adore you guys all the death i don't care what chad says about you behind your backs so. well hey you know always gonna be haters you know <laughs> yeah this is true i did notice some new names in chats so i want to remind everybody um uh please uh go check out fields to water Great channel. We're trying to get Chad back on uh, on track after uh, YouTube gave gave him the 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 run around and, and yeah, messed up the channel. Also, also Jeremy Colvin fishing. We want to give Jeremy our support too. So if you're not subscribed to those guys, enter those names in the in the uh, in the search bar, um, and uh, uh, I'm sure you'll find them. If not, I'm sure somebody will post those links in chat. So. Talk to me, Jerry. What else you got going on? Well, uh, this coming up here, I'm gonna kind of, kind of do a little, few more, few flathead videos, and I'm gonna hit some of these local creeks around here and do some wade fish for like channel cat and flathead. Mm -hmm. Kind of show you guys what that's all about, you know. And but uh, got quite a bit of stuff I'm wanting to do this year. And one big thing I want to try to get together more of you guys, you know, catfish family, and do some fishing, you know. So. <laughs> Definitely. If uh, um, you ever feel like coming up this way, um, call me a week or two before. We'll make sure the spawn isn't happening over the summer. I'm not that far from you. We can probably figure it out. Get a couple of people Definitely. going. If you guys want to come here. It's easier for me to have you come here than me go see you guys all the time. So, well, we can definitely make something like that happen. Thank you, D, for posting links in there. I just saw this unit posted Jeremy's link in there. Uh, I do appreciate you very much. So, uh, And if you guys see somebody's name in chat that you're not subscribed to, chances are they, they do have a YouTube channel or, or, or something. Check them out and, and, and see if there's something you like out there. And uh, um, 
give him your support. Let's see. Frank from Twisted Fish. And he says, YouTube is a blast. I like to create edits. I am still messing around with different stuff, though, uh, like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah, it's Frank. Frank's. Frank's a creative dude, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, I believe he's a tattoo artist. He's always been involved um, in, in the art world, so I can definitely see him taking um, part in the pun like a fish to water when it comes with the creative aspect of, uh, of YouTube. Um, let's get a little bit in, into that. How, how do you pretty much rate your overall experience on YouTube from start to finish? I'll tell you what, it's uh, it's been a learning experience and it get extremely, extremely frustrating at times, you know, the whole, you'll gain a bunch of subscribers, you'll lose a bunch, and, and I was stuck, I just, last week I finally hit 800 subscribers, and I literally sat at that 796 for like two weeks, I get the 800, I lose, you know, just, you know, just madly frustrating, but the people I've got to meet, it's been great. It's, it's been amazing. The amount of the people and the different people through social media I've met through YouTube, it, it's it's been great. It's, for the most part, everything's been a pretty positive experience. So Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely... Yeah, I definitely feel the same way. And now I'm starting to meet people through the podcast and stuff. They're starting to pop into these chats. A couple of the people that are in here now, I noticed they're ones that came over from the podcast and stuff. And it, it is pretty humbling. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it, it's pretty neat. Wait till you, you you're, you're up for, for a wild ride. I want to thank Fish and Freedom for being a, a Catfish and Crappie crew member for five months. You're awesome. He says, great show, guys. Missouri. And he has the muscle lock on there. See, there's a fan of Missouri. Unlike somebody we know who doesn't deserve any cinnamon rolls, but that's a little beyond the stream. So <laughs> excellent fish, a uh, fish on Luke. Luke sent me the uh, pickled pike recipe. I appreciate it, man. I'm definitely going to get that pike. Here's my goal. Now you guys can, whatever. If you guys want to take this idea and make a video, I don't care. I'm going to, this is my goal. I'm going to catch a pike on a hot dog, Jerry. I know I'm always preaching natural baits when it comes to catfish, but I've always heard the stories of people catching pike on hot dogs. And Luke, when we were talking, he's like, yeah, it works. Like it was nothing. Like it happens all the time. So I better get on that. So I want to catch a pike on a hot dog, and then I'm going to pickle the damn thing. But I know if I catch one, it's going to be like this. We got this one spot where they're like 40 inches. I don't know if I want oh, to wow. pickle all that pike. But if I get a little hammerhead one, you know, something around the 14-inch, 16-inch range, I'm definitely going to give that a shot. Um, maybe if I make a couple of jars uh, and they last, I gotta, I'm, I'll got i ask Luke again how long they last. Maybe I'll save a, a jar of that for Mendota and bring it to Lyle can taste it. I don't think I can get him to taste it. Uh, yeah, so. But I might be able to get him to taste some pickled pike. You know, as long as we get some shrimp in him, he'll be a happy dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness, you're much too kind, Tim. Much too kind. Jerry is definitely my hero. Absolutely, good dude. I uh, <laughs> a hot dog, then uh, grill the same hot dog after you catch the pike. Your next video, there you go. I'll be looking for that. <laughs> See what I mean? I don't care. I'm in this for a good time, I'm not in this for anything else other than a meat you know, good anglers. And I definitely have, I consider myself blessed. Um, who else gets to spend their mo Monday night talking to people on their Thursday nights, uh, talking to, uh, future friends or past friends. So uh, I can't speak enough. I'm getting all choked up here like a big old baby. Holy smokes. I do need to say something for the people in chat. One word bacon. Wow. Man, man, I mean, I made it 58 minutes without saying the bacon word. I can't let it go, Jerry. Cannot let it go. We got people saying that. Uh, uh, look at this. Jerry is awesome from Avid. There you go. Epic saying uh, the 90s wiener, wiener spinner is a shoe in. Uh, that would be an awesome video. D's putting up the bacon. Uh People are asking what brand of hot dogs. I got Oscar Myers. Those are what's coming with me next time I head out to this one spot. So, well, I've seen uh, them guys use dead bacon. 
right after I ice out some pikes. I mean, I'm, I don't see why a hot dog wouldn't work, you know? So. Look at this. Fish on Luke says, I subbed to Parker. I like his vibes. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's very humble. You know, he, 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 there's, I, I, I got some angler friends of mine that I call slayers. They're ones that are exceptional. Um, I, I, I'm not going to call Jerry that because it'll go to his head, but just between us, he's pretty good. <laughs> Don't tell him I told you that. It's a secret. How about my next live? I eat a BLT. You know, I've, eat, I've eaten bacon on B, on lives, SK. I have. Usually, uh, uh, I, I, when I'm full swing fishing, I'm kind of low carbonate just because I want to slim down a few pounds, keep from sweating so bad on the water. Because, you know, so us northerners, we don't like the heat. Not at all. Not like Lyle. Lyle lives in Hades, Missouri. We're not going to get into GPS locations. But he gets 65 degrees in in December. Jiminy Christmas. Oh, the weather's been just, it's been crazy. I think New Year's Day, it was like 70 degrees here. You That's know. insane. I'd be uncomfortable. Uh, hey, Jello, what's going on? He says, I'm just trying to learn uh, how and where to catch blue cats, catch lots of channels, never blue. Um, Jello, do you know, get into some of these live streams. Uh, there's a lot of chats that go on. Uh, there's a lot of Q and A's and stuff. Um, I do have a, um, a series that I do on my channel called masterclass. I got definitely got some ideas on people that I want to have on that. Uh, it consists of a pre-recorded podcast, uh, with, with, uh, the people that, uh, um, I, I think would, would be a good fit for, for certain topics. And then we do an ask me anything, uh, either the next week or, or shortly after. And I plan on doing a lot more of those, but I do have a channel cat one, uh, with David Weimer from out of Iowa. The guy's a heck of a channel cat fisherman. He hardly, I don't think he ever gets skunked to be honest. I don't think he's got skunked in the last three years. He knows what he's doing. He fishes the same water. Uh, people say, well, that's an easy task. It's, it's not when your livelihood depends on it. You know, everybody has a bad day. They're not biting, but he's got the biology down. He's a pretty smart dude, too. There's a bunch of people uh, that I really admire um, in the catfishing world. Some of them are definitely here in, in the chat. So uh, just wanted to bring that to uh, Jello's attention. Uh, actually, that's the second time. We got a rod, rod knockers fishing hot dog <laughs> made for chili, not for fish bait. See, now I'm like that when it comes to chicken, ain't I, Jerry? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to see it happen. I've heard that story since I was a kid. When I was a kid, we used to use hot dogs for bait for like panfish and everything, cube it up, and it would work pretty good. You know, uh, mom and dad wouldn't go out and buy us minnows or something, so we may do it with what we had. Mom would get pretty upset when we were taking some of dinner, though, to use for bait. Well, that's where I'm here. Uh, the guys in the Mississippi, in Missouri, when they said jug lines, most of use hot dogs to make, and they catch some big, big dang on fish on hot dogs. I got a big smile on my face because I just got an idea for a video. We'll talk about it after the fact. That one I'm keeping close. It says, does anyone put out a? Yeah, we do. If you check out Palmetto Cats, he's got a catfish calendar on his uh, website. I believe it's shoppalmettocats.com. Let's see what Epic says. Mark, you need to screen record some of your live interview shows and put them on TikTok. Uh, that might be a good idea. So um, are you on social media, Jerry? Where can they find you on social media? I got a link to your uh, channel. Yeah, uh, Facebook page. It's uh, Park Pursuits on uh, Facebook. And I did a couple TikToks a while back, but I haven't pursued that anymore. But I'm going to try to get back in that game to kind of help the uh, Help the channel grow. So, okay, cool. All right, we're right. We're right after an hour. So, remind people again when you're going live next on your channel. We are going to go uh, live next this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time over at Ball and Lake. I'm going to have Josh Weekend Angler, Rich from uh, Fish of Freedom, his wife Stephanie from Real Gals Fish, Danny Stone Outdoors, possibly Rob from Oak Creek, and possibly Ava coming over. We're going to just live stream and just try to have a slaughter fest, you know? 
I think you guys have a good time. I'll definitely tune in, check that out. I look forward to it. Uh, again, if you're listening on a podcast, uh, or if you haven't subbed to Jerry yet, his link is in the description. Uh, I appreciate everybody. Thanks for coming. Jerry, I know you're not a little bit under the weather. You're a champ for coming on here, and it's always a pleasure talking to you, bud. I appreciate you having me on, Mark. Give me the opportunity. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. And uh, we'll we'll see you next week with Eric Mas Eric Massey of Eric Massey Jig